What's up, everybody? Big Herc916. He tuned into another edition of my vlog. I want to say thank you for subscribing. Thanks for all your support. Appreciate all the positive comments. You know, I'm all about that positivity and that motivation. And uh, I want to continue the conversation about finding a good woman. Or how do you know when you have a good woman? Um, you know, with all the different dating sites out there now, um, what is it, Bumble, Tinder, um, Match.com, um, um, I don't know some of the other ones out there, I've been out of the loop, but there's a lot of dating sites out there. It's easy to find someone to Netflix and chill. But uh, when you talk about coming back for the, you know, third, fourth, fifth date, there has to be some connection there. there. Has to be something there that makes you guys' this chemistry relatable, and that gives us some type of uh, some type of balance. And. Uh, you know, outside of sex, man, you got to be able to talk. After you get through bussing and she get through bussing, you know, you, you want to be able to look each other in the eyes and, and share intimacies. You want to be able to have something that makes what you have special. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's asking the personal questions. Um, what do you dream of? What was your dreams growing up? What have you, have you ever fantasized about doing this or doing that? Um, what type of relationship did you have with your family? You know, um, do you, um, do you enjoy doing this or doing that? Um, you know, what do you see yourself at in five years? Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of questions that are more personal that you can ask, but it builds that kind of like breaks down the layers because you have layers in a, in a relationship, you know, on the outer layers, you have your, your makeup, you know, your, your standard hygiene, brushing your teeth, you know, combing your hair, cutting your hair, you know, your face, your your nails, um, your clothing, your breath, you know, the first layer, you know, just what you see, what you interact with on, on the top layer. Then you have the naked body, the breasts, the hammer, you know, the body sin, the the taste of breath, um, you know, just all the things that you you touch, feel, and smell. You know, your eye color. You know, all this stuff. Well, eye color is probably on the outer because that's initial. But um, you know, the second layer, third layer is when you get more into the mental, the conversation the connection, um, the dialogue, you know, um, your passions, and then beyond that, you go spiritual, your beliefs, what do you believe in, what do you follow, or what do you worship, so, you, you gotta, you gotta touch on you got to touch on every layer. Initially, the first layer, like I said, is outward appearance, you know, and uh, you see that all day. I see it. Beautiful women. I look, you know, I'm not gay. I look at women, you know, all day long. Wifey knows. And uh, that's the first layer, you know. But when you get past that, you know, a lot of times you might not like the rest of the package. Something might not be in harmony. It might be kind of funky 
it might have been just, you know, too superficial. You know, you got a, a lot of people who are putting, you know, overemphasis because they watch maybe too many adult movies. So they're, ah, and you're like, look, I haven't even put it in yet. You know, and, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the second layer. But like I said, the third layer, the intimacy, the conversation, that's what keeps you around. That's what keeps you coming back. And so that special woman, you want to really study that and uh, see what you can unveil through those conversations. And if you can build on it, you know, if you feel that this is somebody you can build with and then know that if you're going to make a future with this person, that if you're evolving, they're evolving. You know, a lot of people um, get involved in relationships and then one person is going in one direction and just because they had a kid and somebody, you know, got pregnant and then you decide to get married and it's not really what it should have been. And then both parties are miserable and the kid grows up in a miserable house. You know, it's like all these guys running around with multiple baby mamas you know, then the baby mama gets, you know, a boyfriend and the boyfriend, he, he's a cold a-hole because you don't know how he's treating your kid. And then, you know, the baby mama got a tattoo with his name on her and try to make you mad and won't let you see your kid just because she's trying to get back at you, even though she's acting like she likes this other dude. It's just a drama, man. So, you know, make sure you make the right choices. Wrap your thing up. And, um, you know, don't be so quick because of the first layer to give up all your goods. You know, pace yourself. There's no rush. I see people get involved in relationships and I'm like, man, they have some serious issues because they cannot be alone. And so they go from, uh, boyfriend they go from uh, uh boyfriend 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 you know if a female cannot spend six months to a year by herself and i'm not saying she don't have to you know go out and have a good time she can shit she can sleep with whoever she wants to and not be judged but when you got a this boyfriend up everybody come on man you got to question that you got to question what what's her what is she, what is she, what is she after? What is she seeking? What is she lacking? You know, a pretty girl like that and she's totally just, you know, uh, um, you know, boy, uh, you know, boyfriending up all these guys and some of them you look at them like, damn, you know, this is the best you can do. So, you know, look at the full package. You don't want to talk about someone's exes, but you you know you look to a degree to see like what what they came from to see where they're going and um it's the same thing with you know people and their background and their past you want to ask questions um but you can't judge a person's past to dictate their future um you know, sometimes people, man, you know, their families is just who they are. You know, you can't, you go visit this girl's family, you see the family is garbage or trailer park or just straight ratchet. And, but, you know, she could be trying to get away from that. Unless she has her, she's always over there and has them in her business. Then you know it's not going to work because you don't want ratchet in your business. But if she's trying to, like, if she just did, did it out of courtesy just to, like, pay respect and then she's not really involved in all that then you know hey you know she's trying to move forward because uh yeah you can't you can't deter you can't determine your parents man you're born into a household and sometimes your parents are just who they are you know but um you, you can't let that be a reason unless that person's parents are constantly in the relationship mix. I've seen where a female was, you know, really, really cool, had her thing going on. A friend of mine's female, and then, um, you know, they moved into a house, and then she moved her parents in, 
And then the dad, he wants to be the big bull in the house, so he's constantly punking his daughter, treating her real bad. And, you know, he was already abusive with the mom, and then he was butting heads with the homie. And you get a lot of that, especially in people who have extended families who keep their parents around, you know, that so they don't really move too far from their parents or, you know, they got career jobs, but their parents move in with them. You know, you got to think about a lot of these cultures. That's how they that's how they live. And so the parents are constantly in your mix. So if you're not used to that, you know, you want to think twice about that because the parents in her ear, basically, it's not your relationship. It's it's. It's their relationship, so they're having as much of the input as you and what's going on, and that's that's not going to make for a good uh, long-term commitment. So, you know, look at that too, and um, just little things that you think that annoy you, you know, bring them to her attention, and you know, you don't want to nitpick. And then other things, you just kind of live with it. You pick up behind each other and you compromise and, you, you know, try to make things work. You know, the main thing is she believes in your dreams. You believe in her dreams. Um, she always asks you questions about how your day was. You know, the worst thing is if you have this female, you think you're going to make her, you know, potential wifey. And every time she goes out, she's in her phone with the with the selfie you know looking at her makeup looking at this seeing who's looking at her she's always you know trying to uh focus on you know who's who's uh giving her you know how many likes she has in the comments i mean there's a time and place for that but when that's your whole life and you want that person to show you uh time for your personal time then it's not going to work because they're selfish and you got a lot of selfish women out there you know, you can, you know, women who, you know, they, when you come over, I mean, it doesn't take too, take too long to go on to YouTube and watch a cooking video and, you know, cook a man a good meal and vice versa. But, you know, taking the extra F, making extra effort to show that, hey, man, I really care about you and um, I want to make you happy. You know, people are so in, self indulged with each other that they don't know how to make anybody else happy. And they don't even know how to make themselves happy because they don't know what it is to be happy because it's all me, 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 me. And that's why it's hard for a lot of people to find a good woman. And, you know, the fact that the woman doesn't really care about whether or not the man is getting attention because she's seeking attention from all the men. You know, you, you heard it with one of the NBA players' wives. She was like, well... You know, I know all these women throwing themselves at him, and, you know, he gets all this attention. It'd be nice if guys were doing the same to me, but it's like, why would you be even concerned with that? He's in the limelight. Why would you be concerned about guys throwing themselves at you? What does that mean that you have options, or does that mean that you feel more sexually desirable and, you know, it makes you, you know, feel better about yourself? I mean, you know, it's kind of a oxymoron that you, you know, here it is. This man is with you, and all these women want him, but it's irrelevant because he's with you. So why would it be a big deal to what tell him that all these men want you likewise? Yeah, there's a lot of insecurities, man, especially if you're dealing with people in entertainment, sports, you know, people who are in the public eye, social media. It's a lot of, it's a lot of falsities, a lot of uh, insecurities. And uh, even in re regular relationships, you know, people nowadays, you can go on somebody's Facebook, look at all their friends, you know, check their Instagram, you know, go on their Twitter. And so dating has just all, you know, all these different uh, angles. And so, um, you know, trying to find the right one. I mean, you know, Instagram posts might look like, oh, my God, this is such an amazing person. You meet him in person, you fly him out here or for wherever, or you fly there and you hang out with him for a week, and you're like, oh my God, this is not what I expected. And I've seen that happen a lot of times, you know. Somebody thinks they're, you know, they're, they look all hot in their picture, they get him in person, and you wake up, there's no makeup, and you know, you got the breath, and you got to brush your teeth, and then you start walking or seeing him walking around, and you might see a couple of dimples in the butt, and this and that, and then you start uh, picking, and you know, I mean, you got to be able to live with that, you know. You this is a this is a human being. This is a person who, you know, 
behind closed doors as you know like anyone else but when you put these these high uh expectations and stuff and then you get let down i mean you know you gotta at the end of the day humble yourself and whoever is gonna be that special person in your life you guys can you know walk away from all that outwardly uh judgment and don't you know just look at each other for who you are and um and like i said that's the conversation aspect that's the you know i got your back aspect that's the you know um if your car broke down in the middle of the night i'm gonna get out of bed and come get you um if you need me to come and, and comfort you in a time of need i'll drop what i'm doing i'm there you know that's the difference man is, is that support and uh, and and most of the time, it's like, well, he didn't do this, and he didn't do that, and this, and, but it's all, what about him? What about him? Are you asking him what's up? So, yeah, good woman, man. She, she, she asks the questions. She wants to know. She, she, uh, she's not concerned with, you know, who's looking at you or who's looking at her because her main focus at the end of the day is going to be you. So, yeah, good woman, man. They're out there. You can find them. There's a billion women in the world, man. There's somebody out there for everybody. You know, you just got to look. Be sincere. And, uh, you know, don't be so caught up on your ego. Big Herc 916, holler at me, man.